Hey everybody, so if you've been watching the recent videos you know that I need to replace the headstock bearings on my DR and thanks to Wemoto.com I have those bearings here. Uh, getting the old ones out shouldn't be a problem, I haven't done that yet but it shouldn't be a problem. W what I need first is a tool to put the new ones back in. Uh, you can use the old race and tap it in with a hammer, I wouldn't suggest that personally myself. Uh, I'm going to build a puller. Uh, yes, I could just do this much more simply with some bought bits, but if I make it right, it will be useful for the future for other bikes as well. Um, so I'm just in this video, I'm going to make that thing. Decent quality old thread, which is a M12. Got some M12 nuts, um, some washers. This washer, this 50 mil washer is very close so this is the race that needs to be pushed into the bike frame, there's two of them, top and bottom. And as you can see, it's tapered, so it's thicker at the bottom than it is at the top, and it goes in that way. This does go over that edge just about right, could do with just slightly more. But given on how thin these are, and the fact that it's just a cheap washer, when I try and pull this in, what's more likely going to happen is it's going to become a bowl, basically, and pull inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some bigger versions of this using some steel plate four and a half mil basically thick so that's gonna be pretty strong so what i need to do is make slightly bigger versions of these out of this plate tig a nut on the end of here cut this down and that's basically it but i thought you know why not do a video of doing it in a simple cad program I made some templates so i can get my center point i guess the first thing i need to do is cut this down and cut this down this end is slightly naturally tapered so i'm going to uh, just grind this slightly more so i get a bigger gap for the weld and I need to cut it to length. I've already checked what length I need, and that plus a tiny bit, so somewhere around there. Have I got some tape to mark this? I should have. All right, so I need to part that off there. All right, so I just need to make sure that that fits in without having to take too much material off. Okay, so I've cut the all thread down to what I need, chamfered the end of it so it's a nice good start for the nut. And on the other side, I've actually put more of a bevel into the end of it. And that is so that when I weld the nut on the end, it gives me more of a gap to be able to fill with material just to uh, make sure it's not gonna come undone. You could use jam nuts on the end, but I have a TIG welder. It'll be a two second job and I haven't used it in a long time. I miss it, so yeah. Some of these techniques are very much the same as the ones that I used making clocks. Okay. Obviously, yes, you can use blue dicum and you can use a pair of compasses and stuff to mark stuff out. I don't have any blue dicum. Uh, I do have Sharpie, but it's not showing up very well on here. Uh, and I don't have a compass that's going to be good enough to uh, scratch on this. So this will do, because the thing is, I need to drill the holes and put them together and then grind them so they're close enough. So I now need to drill the centres on these, so to the pillar drill. I couldn't find the normal oil I use for drilling, so I've had to use a substitute, but hopefully it'll be fine. Beautiful. Some of you may be screaming, why didn't you drill the holes before you cut it out of the long bar stock? And I'm asking myself the same question, but we're in this boat, so let's frickin' sail, shall we?
right, now I've got to reduce the speed even more. Well, that was absolutely horrible, but hopefully it shouldn't matter. Now I need to do some trimming and some grinding. So I've got the two blanks as it were. Uh, I've trimmed down the edges as you can see so there isn't as much material to remove and now I'm going to use a flap disc on the angle grinder to bring that edge in as close as I can. Remember this doesn't need to be absolutely super super perfect, it just needs to be bigger than those washers but smaller than the hole it's got to go in. Obviously from a video perspective this is going to be pretty boring because uh, I'm just going to be basically doing, well I'll show you what I'm doing. So you can see how by taking the corners off and bringing it in it's becoming round. This is really hot now, so I'll basically just be spinning it and trimming and spinning and trimming. Okay, well I made this little fixture earlier on because I know the next stage. Um, Basically the same principles as cutting that thread earlier on. So you can see they're actually by hand and eye, they're pretty close, but there's a couple of little steps in places. Okay, 5133, 5132, you know, it's it's pretty close. Ow, just headbutted a light. Um, it's close enough, so now I need to split these in two. Okay, so now I need to get all the glue off and round all the corners, so I'm basically just going to uh, turn this on and go at it. Okay, so there we go. Two thick washers basically but these are very very strong and will be perfect for the job um, they are I've measured them they are not perfectly round and the centers are not perfectly in the center because of a couple of mistakes I made along the way however uh, these will be good enough and will do the job so the last thing I need to do is just TIG weld the nut on here um, as you can see the dull part I have wire brushed the galve as in galvanization off of it because you do not want to weld that and breathe it uh, I need to do the same thing to the nut and then I've just got to, you know, stick that on the end there. Okay, slight issue, my TIG welder won't turn on. I've just taken the fuse out of it to check it, and, uh, yeah, it's fine, but can someone tell me, have you ever seen anything like that done before? That was in the stock plug. That has been shorted, and it was hidden in the plug that way around so you couldn't see it. Duh, what? What? That wasn't to my welder, that was to the plasma cutter? Crisis over, I was plugging the wrong plug in, but however, what the hell is with that fuse? I'm not using that plasma cutter again until I've looked into that. That's dodgy as hell when I bought that through Amazon. OK, 
okay, I don't know why I tried doing that, sort of stood up and bent over, because it didn't make me very still. But I mean, it's flat. It looks weird here, but it is flat. That's on there. Um, let me clean that up. Hold on. This little dink you can see here is about half a mil deep. I could grind that out, but what's the point? It's not going to change the way it works. Don't be over perfectionist over things. Making tools for yourself saves your fortune. Doesn't matter if it looks a little bit janky. Um, right, okay, so the idea is this. One small washer, one large washer. See where we're going with this? Stacking up the sizes. Then one of our plates. So that'll be for the bottom. And then on the top, obviously, you have the same in reverse. The idea of using big plates and decreasing washers is one, to spread the load out, but also... Sorry, my focus keeps going nuts here. The reason I'm using in focus camera, my god, the reason I'm using uh, different sizes of washers is the hope, well, this is my hope anyway, that you see, if this is slightly kinked over, it's going to naturally want to bring it back straight. Um, obviously, if you had a small washer only, it's it's not going to have the same effect. But where we've got multiple washers stacking up, this should pull itself straight. So obviously, the idea is you get the bearing seat for the bottom race, the bearing seat for the top race in. Do you do one at a time or do you do them both at the same time? I reckon one at a time is probably more sensible. There is ways of doing that. But anyway, point is, um, which case I wouldn't need to do it. Shush. Point is, this will squeeze when tightened up with the nut, the races in. So we're not hitting them in. They should hopefully find a more natural, you know, find their position in and go straight in. Uh, taps, for instance, on mills or on lathes, they're not held, taps in for tapping thread. They're not held rigidly. They're held loosely so that they find their own way. Uh, this should hopefully help the bearings races do the same thing. Oh, also, as you know, as I mentioned earlier on, I know the centre in this is about half a millimetre out. Uh, I, maybe I should have drilled the hole afterwards, whatever. I only could make them by having a hole in it. So, you know. Um, if I needed to, I could enlarge that by a millimetre and then just get it to sit in the right place by moving it side to side. So if we offer it up to the bearing, there is literally half a mil all of the way around that race. So it's going to go in that way, that will sit on top of it, and it will go shrunk down. And it shouldn't, because it's smaller than everything around it, get stuck or anything like that. If it does look like it's a bit tight, it will take 10 minutes to just take another mill off of these. So there we go. Job done. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe if you are new here. I'm on way to 100k. The next video... Um, ah, damn. I forgot to crawl the Q&A. Right, the next video is going to be Q&A, which we'll probably have to film tomorrow. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is now done. And the next video you'll see with the DR is going to be me, me removing the old bearings and hopefully getting the new ones in. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. And a huge thanks to my patrons. You're amazing. Bye-bye.